Welcome everyone to the Undercover Brony Reviews. The episode reviewed today will be Daring Doubt, written by Nicole Dubuque. So Daring Doubt. <clears throat> uh, this was the best Daring Do episode. Okay. That, that I, even better than the Daring Don't. Where you literally find out that she is AK yearly. I and it am, makes you enjoy a rainbow dance episode. I am going to be honest. I have liked the Daring Do episodes. I've never loved them really. Um, I mean, we got Quibble Pants because of its EK Yearling episode, but then Quibble Pants had a way better episode this season. I think, it, yeah, this season. Um, and I kind of like AK Yearling, but I, again, never like loved her. And you know, all the the fan fictiony stuff and all the stuff with Ali Zodal and Cavalier on. I know it's supposed to be Indiana Jones, but to me, it's just a little too Indiana Jones to like be this like big old gem of the fandom, whatever. But I've always liked it. I always thought Ali Zodal, honestly, I always kind of wished he could have been like in a bigger narrative canon because I always thought he was cool. Mm-hmm. But that's he was that always, tail hand. But he was always self-contained to this. And this episode, it took you for a ride. Cause like it was like now there are some little things that don't match up, but basically TLDR, yeah, this was this was daring this is daring do's best episode for me personally, just because, you know, it didn't it never felt boring. You know, I, I, I thought the plot twists were kind of cool. And, uh, yeah, Flutter Dash, too. So that was sick. Okay, so you were saying that this episode took you for a ride. That is a great segue into today's sponsor, uh, They Tell You Rock. <laughs> I don't know why. I thought, I thought you were, I thought you were going to say Need for Speed. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, no, no. What was that one game you always liked? Was it Need for, Was it Burnout Paradise or something? Uh, Burnout Revenge, I believe. Revenge. Yeah. The one where you could turn your car into a fucking bomb to kill all the other races and cause as much destruction as possible. Jack, it was awesome. Jack X Who? So the episode opens up. Fluttershy um, is. <laughs> excuse me, is is a uh, skanking on over to Rainbow Dash's crib and seriously the skies. just say that Fluttershy was walking like a skank? No, I said skanking. It's a, it, it's a, it's a skater thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's a, it's a, it's a mosh thing. Okay. See, uh, okay. Okay. See, yeah. She was, she was fluttering over to uh, Rainbow Dash's crib and she was like, yo, Flutter, yo, Rainbow Dash, thanks for the books. Or as my people would say, gracias para los libros. I mean, they would have said it better, but that's basically what they would have said. So Rainbow Dash is like, yeah, dude, it's, it's sick stuff. And Fluttershy is like, yeah, I especially like the I especially like the Daring Do book that spent 500 pages talking about how Daring Do is an asshole. And Rainbow Dash is like, D- D- what? And she's like, yeah, check this out. And I like the cover for it. It kind of, I can't remember what it reminds me, but it reminds me of something. But the cover of the uh, of the Daring Do diss track book is a picture of Daring Do, but like her fedora's tilted down and she's mm-hmm. like got an evil smirk. It's like that, it's like that classic edge lordy cool guy thing that people do. Um, and it's talking about how much she uh, got stuff wrong about, uh, colors of tulips or whatever and destroys spider webs and Fluttershy is like totally drinking the Kool-Aid on it. Right. Uh, she this, got fucking red pill. This is actually a, I know I should probably save this, um, this, um, um, the, it's not a, it's a, uh, I should save this, um, opinion piece for later in the review, but this episode seemed to propose the idea that Daring Do wasn't as pure 
hearted or whatever as we thought she was, which we kind of get little glimpses at through each and every one of her various appearances throughout the years. But this one really seemed to solidify, uh, not solidify, really seemed to be going in on, hey, man, you think this person's good, but they're actually a huge dick. And, like, we kind of got some... We kind of got some background on Cavalaren, but we never really got any on Daring Do. And I honestly feel like the whole Daring Do is not who you think she is thing really could have been, A, an interesting plot choice to go in and also would have been an interesting uh, crossroads for Rainbow Dash's character. But I feel like, honestly, after uh, jumping ahead, I feel like after Rainbow Dash and... uh, A.K. Yearling start chasing after Fluttershy and Cavalaron, that they kind of just drop that, and the episode just kind of keeps going. That's just me. I don't. I I just noticed that. I was I, I was actually really interested to see where they could go with that, but they, I think I feel like they just kind of dropped it. So, mm-hmm. the Daring to Diss track is written by what is it? Grim M M. Uh, no, yeah, it's like Grim M M. Martingale. <laughs> which is a George R. R. Martin reference. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, there's... A I book- kind of figured that it was, just from the way they said it. I'm like, that's got to be a, a George R. R. Martin reference right there. So, in fact, there's a book signing in Ponyville, which, I mean, I guess that makes sense, because Cavalaron did, probably didn't know where Rainbow Dash lived, but I still thought it was kind of funny, where it's like, hey bad guys right in your hometown so they go there and to further hammer home the point about it being a george r, r. martin reference, <laughs> he's got a beard and uh, correct me if i'm wrong i thought he was wearing a hat and glasses too i think I he was wearing awesome. glasses but i don't think he was wearing a hat don't you mean that hat you little shit so rainbow dash just straight up goes up to him and is like, hey, I know what you're doing. Stop it. And Cavalaron's like, no. And one of my favorite lines from this whole scene is Cavalaron says something to the effect of Gary and Duke kicks puppies or something like that. And- yeah. And you have the little filly sitting there, tears in her eyes, like, really? And Jerry G's like, no, that was just one time. It was one, yeah, yeah, they, they cut, it, it's, a, it's a brick joke. They come back to it, like, two scenes later, and they're like, and she's like, that was one time, accidentally. Right, I'm, I'm sorry, first they go to A.K. Yearling's signing to try yes, to warn yes. her, try to warn her. But it's too late, and then they and then right yeah, because the because across the yeah across the street is where Cavalaron is, and I'm like looking just from the the picture that they have for his biography in the back, like his little summary. Yeah, that that was totally Cavalaron. So totally Coco Cabana. So, so Cavalaron is trying to talk to him. He's like, "Hey, man." You guys don't know my side of the story, and then, um, and then, and then Rainbow Dash is like, "Yeah, right. There's no way. There's no way that you're in any way um, a deeper character than I've been led to believe all these years. I'm out of here." And for hell, sh- that it, even the show staff uh, up until this episode would have you believe as well. Yeah, exactly. And then Flourish is just like, "Yeah, unless," and then she listens to Cavalaron's thing. And he's like, okay, so look, bro, here's what happened. I ran the Swank Museum, and I wanted to get artifacts to put in the museum. But Daring Do would always just be like, hey, piss off, loser. Give me your lunch money. And I was like, well, bro, let's work together. And she's like, no. And uh, and Fluttershy mm-hmm. brings up the plot point. Didn't you try to sell stuff? And he's like, well, yeah, but my museum was about to go out of business, so I had to. I think he was lying about the museum. They never outright said he was or wasn't, but I think we were meant to believe that he was. Well, here's the thing. What I find it, it's going into the reference of 
this being like an Indiana Jones reference. In reality, it's kind of a subversion of that because if you remember in The Last Crusade, one of the big plot points was where Indiana Jones would keep saying, it belongs in a museum. And literally, now you're saying that the bad guy is the one with the museum. That's kind of like a, a role reversal almost. <clears throat> which is uh, which is uh, one of me- of several subversions that happens on this episode. So, Cavalaren convinces Fluttershy to go to the temple of to go to the temple of uh, <laughs> yeah to go to the temple of Yowie Wowie, the temple of Bray Wyatt. No, um, I forgot to turn that off. <laughs> so they go to the they go to the temple of uh, of. Timbuk two or whatever, and Flutter and Rainbow Dad and uh, they come out. Sorry, they're going out the store before they go, and Fluttershy tells Rainbow Dad, she's like, "Dude, I think we had the wrong idea about Doctor C. Um, I'm gonna go with him to the sick temple," and Rainbow Dash is like, "Oh no!" So go- she goes to AK Yearling. This is where the "I kick the dog by accident" thing happened. Mm-hmm. Line. It was funny. And Rainbow Dash is like, dude, they're going to this temple to get this to get this MacGuffin. And she's like, but wait, you can only get that MacGuffin if you if you're a Pegasus, because you need to fly. And Rainbow Dash is like, oh no. And then they uh then they chase after him. Now John had messaged me a few days ago. He was like, dude, there's this big old Wonder Woman reference in this episode. And I was like, okay, it's probably gonna be like name of something or someone a place a location maybe it's uh maybe it's a line or a throwaway thing maybe it's a mythology gag no i wasn't aware it was going to be the whole plot point because the artifact that cavalarin's after it's the artifact of plate tectonics and it makes you tell the truth when when you wear it and i was just like oh my god lasso of truth who yeah so well, they're blasting CCR because they're running through the jungle. Rules of nature. <laughs> that is not clear. It's clear water revival. I but... know. I just I I just have to throw that in every so often so I can remind you that you <clears throat> have played an awesome fucking game and for some reason Ken Icarus doesn't like it. <sighs> Don't remind me. Man, Melody Rising had such a dope soundtrack, but the only thing anyone remembers from it is 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 the hammy bad guys. Or the or the soundtrack. Well, yeah, but I'm saying the soundtrack, it's one of the it's legitimately one of the best video game soundtracks I've ever heard in my life. And I've been playing games since 97. So I mean that's a lot. That's a lot of soundtracks. Okay, mm-hmm. so they're uh, they're running through the jungle. Uh Cavalaron and his boys. One of uh, there's a couple times where some of his guys mess up and he yells at them, but then he remembers Fluttershy's there and then he backs off. Like one of them steps on a flower and he's like, Oh, don't step on that flower. One of them almost eats a poison fruit. He's like, Hey, don't eat that poison fruit. But then the guy's like, But I'm hungry. And I'm like, You know what? Mood. Uh, <laughs> and then Fluttershy's if I like, kill me, but fuck it, I'm hungry. And then Fluttershy's like, Don't worry, guys, I got you. She's like, pizza time, and then she has a whole bunch of snacks. And because this is a kid's show, Cavalaron's response is, you mean you don't have a problem with sharing? And then they get attacked by evil jaguar cats. Well, there's like four different cats. They chase them through the jungle. Yeah, it's like it's like a, a puma, a, um, a, a leopard, or no, no, more like a cheetah. A regular old house cat. Yeah. And, well, I yeah. swear, this this reminded me, do you remember that scene in The Emperor's New Groove where Cusco gets chased by all the cats? I think so, but I... And keep, there was, like, there was of, like that one little cat. Yeah, but I keep thinking about that one scene where, or that was referenced, this, this guy worked at an amusement park and this girl steps up and it's one of those um, one of those water rides where you fall straight down before it uh, turns into a slide. Literally, this girl had the audacity to say, "Pull the lever, Kronk. 
he pulls the lever. If four falls out from under, four lever. <laughs> and the funny thing is, the dude didn't even realize what she was asking until he heard wrong lever. I'm just like, yes. My receding hairlines approves very much so. So, so how about that Disney Plus? Hey, look. According, uh, look, man. I I have I have a lot of opinions on Disney, and I'll have even more after reading the new book by CEO Bob Iger, "The Ride of a Lifetime," available now. Okay, so back to ponies. So they're walking through the forest, chased by jungle cats. Flourish, I was like, dude, have you guys, she seriously proposed, doesn't she realize she's the, she does realize she's the only one that can talk to animals, right? I mean, I mean, it's been said multiple times, but Angel, like, literally said it word for word, and she talks to Angel. Anyway, she's I'm like, have animals, you guys, I want to marry this dude, can you imagine that, that that this is the timeline we're living in where they actively acknowledge they actually throw Fluttercord a bone <laughs> this late in the game. Yeah. So I haven't seen any of those finale spoilers yet, except for like one thing, but it ain't related to that. And I'm just telling you, if those crazy mother lovers go through with that, I will actually burn. I will actually I will pee straight up in the air. <laughs> those shit poster bro those shit poster brownies. Ready your cup charts. I don't I don't know. I don't oh know. So she asks them, have you tried talking to the carnivorous jungle cats? And Cavaleron's like, no, you know what? It honestly never crossed my mind to even consider talking to the carnivorous jungle cats. And she's like, well, bro, I got you. So she goes to talk to the carnivorous bloodthirsty jungle cats. And the cats are like, yeah, dude, no, you're cool. Just, uh, just, just walk on by. Walk on by. Because Fluttershy's like, yeah, we're just passing through. We don't want no trouble, sir. Move along. Move along. Want... So they get to the temple, and they ascend it. And they got to wait till the sun hits the right point, because then they can Nathan Drake something into a slot. So meanwhile... And by the way, know... the, the thing that I was thinking of when that was happening, where the sun has to be in a perfect position... Yes. There is literally a side quest, like a shrine quest in Breath of the Wild, where you have to stand on the pedestal without any clothes or weapons on, like where you just have the boxer shorts that you start out with, and you stand on this platform during a blood moon, and it opens up the shrine. I'm just like, damn. There was a local band named Blood Moon. Uh, in my area once. That's awesome. They were so loud. They had so much gear and so many pedals. <laughs> and that's coming from the metalhead, guys. Oh, dude. <clears throat> You'll never find a group of individuals more, more, more uh, willing to experiment with sound and drop money on random gear crap than metal bros, okay? Maybe you'll get those old 60-year-old dads that play in cover bands bought down by the bars. You know the ones I'm talking about. But nah, dude, metalheads, we are, uh, we're a gnarly bunch. So, Yearling and Dash are flying through the woods and they get caught up in vines. And then, uh, well, Yearling gets caught up in vines. And she's like, no, get away. It's Ali Zolo. And I'm like, what? And then, oh, look, it's it's Ali Zolo. So he's like, I don't know how you dudes escape my jaguars, but now I'm going to eat your souls. And they're like, bro, we didn't see any jaguars. And he's like, what? You didn't see my jaguar F-type? Like, seriously? So 
um, Cavalaron puts the thing in the thing, the thing opens, and they go into the thing. Um, Yearling's able to cut the vines, to cut her vines, and then grabs Rainbow Dash, and then drags her up, and then they go into the the entrance before it closes. Now, I was disappointed by this scene because I was really, really, really hoping that when AK Yearling was pulling Rainbow Dash along, she was going to, like, bump up and down the stairs as Yearling was flying up. <laughs> but, like, she's going up like this, but Rainbow Dash is going, ow, 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 ow. And then she gets to the top and she has, like, missing teeth and shit. She's, yeah, there's a shot where she has, like, missing teeth. She's got a bunch of bumps and a black guy. But then it's a cartoon, so she just shakes her head and then she's all fine. Yeah. I was very disappointed that and it's not to those of you, comedy. To those of you who say that shit wouldn't be, would be in the show. Do you not remember a royal problem when Luna's teeth were falling out? Do you not remember the Lauren Faust episodes of the show? Spike got the kick, the crap kicked out of him all the time. Uh huh. Does anyone? Does no one remember Scoot abuse? Well, that was. Well, that now was that have abuse. Hey, look, and it's like no. I'm just, I'm just gonna say this, okay? I'm no saint, okay? I'm no pure-hearted individual but there comes a point i don't even I, it, there does i'm not even saying there comes a point where you have to draw the line i'm saying there comes a point in life where you just have to be like dude what the fuck <laughs> so they get in the temple she's like dude we're lost without a map even though they run into the bad guys like just in the nick of time so lost in time. sorry so Cavalaron is like, dude, there's the artifact. But I, I didn't realize that we would have to fly. I'll do it, says Fluttershy. And he, she's like, oh, Fluttershy, you're the best. So she gets the artifact. And then, out, and then Cavalaron puts it on. And then Yearling's like, and then Yearling's like, not so fast, Star Fox. And she's, and then, well, I know that's not the line. I you knew you were about to correct me. Yeah. So, <laughs> can't let you do that, Star Fox. But here, no, no, can't let you do that, Snakeskin. But, <laughs> but I'm I also sorry, love, Star Fox. I'm afraid I can't let you do that. Yeah. I also love how when she pulls the artifact, there's a bunch of lava spires that come up, and Cavalaron helps her safely, like get over safely. And I'm like, that's fucking cool yeah that's really fucking cool and so um and so uh i i forget what she asks first but i remember what she asks next she's basically like she's like cavalaron are you here to steal the no wait are you what no Maybe... it was it was it was rainbow dash asking why did you capture fluttershy and bring her along what did you do to her and it's like why did you like, you knew you'd had to be a Pegasus. You brought her along just for that. And I love how when they're having to tell the truth that their eyes and mouth grow green. That was just kind of cool. Yeah, I don't, like, know, I don't know what no, it is. Well, yes, <laughs> but that was it at first, but she actually showed us some kindness and hospitality. And no, yeah, no, that was it. She asked something along the lines of like, of like, and you were playing to portray Fluttershy, weren't, weren't you, or something like that. Yeah. And then, and then he's like, and he's like, yes, but no. And I was like, oh, that's nice. So then Owie Zola finds him, and then he's gonna like, and then he's like, I'm gonna eat your face. And then they're like, no. So they, so Come they, on. so they run like a. I almost said a really bad joke. Never mind. So they're running away. <laughs> and um, they reach a dead end. Owizol's like, Owizol's like, you can't stay in there forever. And then Fluttershy's like, hey, guys, have you ever tried just asking the bloodthirsty, most likely carnivorous ancient being that guards these temples. Have you ever tried talking to him and asking what his deal is? And then Yearling and Cavalaron are basically like... So she goes to talk to Ali Zodal and she's like, bro, why do you do the things you do? 
And then the show has the freaking temerity to be like, it's my job. And I'm like, I got bosses I need to please. And I'm thinking, wait, wait, who are these bosses? I kind of want to see that. Because if you think about it, (laughs) no, seriously, think about it. He's one of the most unusual of the mythological creatures that we have in this he's show. Def- he's definitely the most, I would argue he's probably the most unique. Yeah, exactly. He's one of the more unique characters on the show. And you got to wonder, who is, who are his bosses, the Eternals? I had an opinion. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's Jack Kirby's uh, New Gods. It's Dark Side. <laughs> he's, he's, guarding, he's guarding a piece of the anti-life equation. No, so I figured it out. Check this out. So, Ali Zodal is this person that, because of circumstance surrounding his job, he was a nice guy, assumedly, that became a bad guy. And he has bosses that are mad at him for things beyond his control. And they're like, hey, do b- even though it's really not your fault, do better or you're going to be fired. And he's essentially, he's not really enslaved, but he's kind of, I get the vibe, he's kind of like Knuckles. It's his duty to watch these things with very little thanks. And then it hit me. Or he's contractually obligated, one out of the two. Yeah, and then that's when it hit me. Howie Zodal's an Amazon employee. (laughs) Hey, John, did you know that that was me for three and a half years? Hey, John, did you know your OC made in the Friendship is Magic five years ago? Oh, my gosh. Hey, Barry, zoom in on John's depression. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, hold on. Hold on. Wait. I'm going to try and edit this in. So you're going to be like, zoom in on John's depression. I'm going to be like this, and then I'm going to zoom in where I'm doing this. Okay. Hold on. Okay, we'll see if that works. I think it should. I think it should work. I, that just came to me right now. Hey, yo, Barry. Oh man, Game Grubs was so cool for its first three years, and that's one of those years being with Ross. So, yeah. wait, wasn't John? Wait, was John Tron only around one year or two? I think it was around two. Okay. Okay, so they um, where was I? Yeah. So then Ali Zol's like, yeah, dude. The Elder Gods are super pissed at me. Shao Kahn's about to come down here and set sick HR on my ass. <laughs> and then and then Daring Do's like, well, I wanted to protect the articles because I thought they needed protecting and the they needed preserving. And Ali Zol's and Ali Zodal gives the Vince McMahon response where I just wanted money. I could have said Mr. Krabs, but that would have been too easy, Jonathan. And I yep. am a man, and I am a man of distinction. So they sell their differences. He's like, they're like, you know what? We'll leave your artifacts alone. I wish this episode was like three seasons ago because I would have actually been really down with other daring do episodes and them interacting with other creatures like Ali Zodal. They Holy shit, you're totally right. It could have been this, like, sick, child-friendly Legend of Zelda God of War type of bullcrap. It would have been sick. And uh, But anyway, in another lifetime. So they so it flashes forward. Yearling and Cavaleron. Wait, so A.K. Yearling's her real name. Cavaleron is his real name, right? The Martin yes. Gale was a pseudonym. Okay, I thought so. So Yearling and... and I almost said Yearling and pseudonym. So Yearling <laughs> and Cavaleron co-wrote a book and i'm like oh sick but they immediately get buried and job out because remember that's just like i thought your guys's first co-book would have been fat and they're like uh we got out hyped and i'm like oh no no way and right across the street Ali Zodal, <laughs> Ali Zodal is sitting with the kids in ponyville and he's just like and then the brave Aoi Zodal squashed those two heathen ponies beneath his mighty opulence. Da, 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 my hey, I pony. gotta say, that edgy shot 
of Ali Zoldo reading to the kids? Does that not remind you of when we were kids and we would go to the library to listen to a story? Did you have that at your library? I don't know why, but I thought you were going to say, does that not remind you of when George Bush was reading that those books to those children and he got informed about 9-11? <laughs> I don't know why that's where my mind went, but that's that's where it went. In all seriousness, though, did to you like that? Yes. To, to answer your question, yes. Yeah. That shit was awesome back in the day. That was cool. They had special reader, uh, writers come in. They had teachers that uh, that read to us. It, it was neat. I thought it was neat. This episode was a solid nine. It's the best Daring Do episode. It was good. Granted, the revelation that Ali Zolda wasn't a bad guy the whole time, it kind of contradicts a few things that we knew about him from past episodes. But I guess you could leave it up to the interpretation that A.K. Yearling, since she misunderstood him, that maybe it was... Uh, uh, but Rainbow Dash was there for Derek. I don't know. It's fine. It's... It was. I thought it was a good episode. Okay. I give this a nine and a half. And the reason I give it a nine and a half is because this episode tied everything up in a nice little package, ended up the Daring Do saga in a really great way. And I was talking to Snakeskin about this before we recorded. I asked him, I basically said his his response to them not understanding each other could have gone a couple different ways. Now, thankfully, just like with me, he thought of it as in the, 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 in the correct way where it's literally, hey, it's a misunderstanding, but it was written in a good way. Whereas some people, I know there's probably some people who are going to be like, they literally were enemies for this long because of a misunderstanding. Problem is, it was written really well. So it kind of factored everything in, and it worked. So yeah, nine and a half for me. I forget what movie it's from, but didn't someone say once the villain is the hero in their, in, in their mind or something like that? Uh, or I, I'm paraphrasing. Did you say something like that? And then there was also one where, every, of course, uh, every the Dark villain Knight, is the hero in their own story, or yeah, something like that. But I'm also thinking you either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Well, no one dies in the show except the Ice King. So yeah. Anyway, yeah, no, I thought it was a good episode. Next week is we're almost there, you guys. I honestly can't believe it. Next week is the uh, I think last it's the, yeah QD Mark Crusaders episode. Ooh boy, I'm I'm bringing it up now. If I remember correctly, it was titled "Breaking Up Is Hard." No, "Growing Up Is Hard to Do." Growing up is hard to do. I'm looking for the synopsis. When the QD Mark Crusaders are magically transformed into grown-ups, discover that growing up the right way means gaining experience and wisdom that simply can't be rushed. Wait, I'm sorry. Were you reading an NLP synopsis or were you reading something from a self-help book? I have no idea, but at the same time, it makes a lot of sense, because think about this. Who wrote this episode? Dave Peltzer? Uh, let me check. It is was written by Ed Valentine. Ed Valentine? No way. I haven't seen that dude in a minute. Yeah, so that'll be interesting. Huh. So, yeah. Huh. Well, Until next time. Okay, yeah. Next time. Until next time, that's it from me, John. And me, his fat friend. And we will talk to you guys later. Peace out, dragon. You're not even going to tell me you're not fat. <laughs>